good morning. I'm very excited about today. It's just me feeding up, doing all those annoying things right now. Today? Oh my god. Hold on. Hold that thought. I think it's fair to say that she is stockpiling for COVID-19. Today we are, sorry I was rudely interrupted before by my hungry tiny cow, but today we are going to be doing a flying change checklist, which means all the things that we do to prepare our horses for when we start the flying change. So we're going to do everything we can to prepare them really well and then in our next video the flying change challenge we're going to start three horses changes and that will be Birdie, Ella and Jackie and Ben's going to take you through the motions on that but for today we're going to show you all the bits and pieces everything you can put in place to make sure that the flying change comes as easily as possible. So stay tuned and we'll show you how we got captain's changes to this point. Okay, so the Russells have ran off and disappeared into here hunting rabbits. Currently looking for them. This is actually where Bonnie got stuck in the hole for seven hours. I don't know where they might have gone, have no hope of finding them, and now I've disappointed this lot who think they're getting their breakfast right now, which I don't have. So the float is currently filled with olive, literally filled with because Ben is obsessed with trees right now. And these ones, they're in these little cute half pots and they are going to be going either side of the arena gate if we can get them out. They weigh a ton and it's not easy, but we'll give it a go. Come on, Eddie. <laughs> Goodbye. So Keely's stolen Ben's whip, <laughs> which is not allowed. She's gonna be banished. Apparently, she wants one with a tip, so I've got one that's like half destroyed. So Ben gets the crap whip. But it's true. It's not a lie. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I was really gonna need a whip. Well, the captain can be fairly lazy, like father, like daughter. Jackie has decided she does not appreciate being left behind and she is in pursuit of hay so we are going to tie her up to the arena until it's her time you can see our magnificent olive trees looking very grand at the entrance and all these little bad boys that have to get planted. So many beautiful succulents planted along the ugly ridge. Hi, bunny. So checkpoint one, can you go forward and come back in the canter, establishing three solid canter rhythms, so a forward lengthen type canter, a collector type canter, and your really strong working canter. This is important because it gets the horses in front of the leg, develops a canter half halt, and shows they have the strength, balance, and you have the control to actually do the change. Just make sure through this that you're trying to stay straight. We don't want their quarters swinging in. Make sure you've got that hind quarter underneath. Checkpoint two is simple changes through trot and walk. This will build on the exercise we just did, forward and back. It's just more precise and more clear cut, which really helps with the change. You know, you could come back, make the half halt and activate straight away. It helps to put the hind leg underneath and lift the shoulder and also gets the horses actually thinking about swapping their leads, which is really important. And it tunes up those aids, those all important aids for picking up canter that are gonna come into play. We don't think the simple changes through walk have to be 100% perfect. They just have to be effective before you can take on the change. As long as you can get a good response when you ask for the weight and a great response when you go forward again, I think you're ready to go. 
Once you feel balanced and controlled and like you're getting really positive reactions forward and back through these simple changes and that your aids are effective, it's time to move on to checkpoint three. Checkpoint three is going to be one of your hardest ones. So you can set this up. It doesn't have to be as tight as it is or it can be tighter if you wanted to. But what we do is set up four poles in a square shape with little gaps where you can enter. And we're going to make a teeny tiny, you know, this is probably approximately an eight meter circle in canter just to show that we can really sit in the canter and that we can turn with this relatively straight neck and activate the hind legs. Okay, so be able to turn that shoulder and ride forward again in great balance. Good. Checkpoint four is going to be manipulating the hindquarters to the inside and the outside, making a baby rhombair and baby travers positioning. Okay, this is a bit of a tough one, but you wanna make sure your horse is supple enough through its ribcage and strong enough and, and through enough to be balanced in a travers and a rhombair sort of position. Um, you're gonna use that when you're doing the change a little bit sometimes. It's important to make sure with this that you're in control of where the haunches are going. And haunches is just another word for hindquarters if you haven't heard that before. And that the horse isn't just swinging their butt around. Checkpoint five is an obvious one, a little bit of counter canner. Now, I don't think this needs to be a million miles of counter canner before you do a change, but it is good to have it in place for suppleness, strength, and balance before you take on the change. And also, so they don't anticipate the change, they've got this counter canner in place already. Checkpoint six is going to be making the aids over a pole. We're gonna start this by doing a walk and then re-picking up the counter. I know, I know Ella came off the bit there, but a good demonstration of how clear you have to be through this exercise. So you're going to come through, stop the front end, change the lead, activate the hind end. Yeah, and that wasn't even a real proper pause, but it was clear that she gave herself the time to come back. Then once you've got that solid, you can eliminate the stop and just ask for the aids over there. That time, Kelly only got the fronts, and then she'll come through and try again. And this time, hopefully, she'll get the hinds as well. And she kept her upper body really still and really made the aid there. Okay, guys, you made it through all the steps. So to recap, we had, can you go forward and back in the canter? Can you do simple changes through trot and walk in canter, obviously? Uh, can you do a teeny tiny circle? Use the poles to make sure you're not falling in or out and that you've got control over the shoulders. Can you do a little bit of haunches in and haunches out in the canter along the fence? Can you do counter canter? And can you change the lead over a pole on like a figure eight sort of shape? So once, now that's all in place for us, it's time for tomorrow's video. We're gonna have the challenge and Ben's gonna hop on because he's better at flying changes than me, I'm not gonna lie. And he is going to see how many changes he can get out of Ella, Jackie and Birdie and see who is the winner. There will be a little surprise for him for every change he gets clean apparently. <laughs> you know, one pack of Easy Mac per clean change, which is kind of hard to come by in these coronavirus times. So a little bonus per clean change in the form of cheesy microwavable goodness. So definitely subscribe to our channel so you don't miss tomorrow's update on how all this training works out. I don't know yet, we will find out.